Okay, we have roll call. All counselors present and a quorum has been declared. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the agenda approval. Mayor, if there's no changes, I'll make the motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, start voting, please. Ms. Harley? The motion carried unanimously. Okay, good. The next item we have, uh, we have citizen comments. Um, what I would like for you to do is if you could come up to the podium and state your name and uh, we will limit the conversation uh, down to um, the comments to three minutes. Uh, when we approach three minutes, I will ask you politely to sit down if you get to where you're going over those three minutes. Um, if you have any comments, you want to make sure you fill out a comment card and turn it in to our city uh, clerk. Um, at this time, I only have one comment card and it is Ms. Ruthie Brown. Hi, um, a few weeks ago I was in here, um, I think it was that first meeting in February and I was pretty upset. It was right after my mother-in-law had fallen and hit her head and died and uh, pretty hard to deal with, but what's harder to deal with than that is trying to do little things in the city of Alamosa. So I'm, I'm sharing the emails with you that I referenced that evening. And even though the recycling center is opening for longer hours because of daylight savings time, I don't understand the problem with getting it open all the time when people want it. Um, I tried to get some figures. I gave you some uh, then. Um, I, didn't, I didn't make you copies of my, my name so far, but I think they're up to about 85 of people who kind of feel the same way I do and that's without even really trying to go after them. So we're still requesting that the, the yard be open uh, when people can use it on Sundays 10 to 4, uh, Saturdays till 6. Um, in one of these emails, we talk about being stewards of the city's money, of the taxpayers' money. and. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and say it would cost $15,000 to keep the recycling area open longer hours. How many signatures do you need because I'll keep gathering them? But then I go to the ice skating rink, the pavilion. Um, we have it. But how many people step forward and sign something to get you to spend three million plus dollars. Um, this is this is small potatoes. Um, so I don't understand the problem. Out at the recycling area, you have two guys working, one working 40 hours and one guy working 30 hours. When I think of someone working 30 hours, I think of what I call the devil store and the practices they use in hiring someone so that they don't have to pay benefits, uh, sick time or whatever comes along with that. That guy could get 10 hours and he could support his family, he could maybe improve his, his life, his home, uh, whatever. Is 10 hours too much? Um, you are stewards of our money and I, I don't get it. So, and because our city manager wouldn't answer any of the questions, I'm asking city council to come and find me sometime and sit down and tell me why this is an impossibility. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Okay, I don't have any other uh, comment cards, so I'm just gonna assume that there are no other comments, so we'll move on the agenda. Any follow-up to that? No, sir. Okay, thank you. The next item we have next is the uh, consent calendar A. 
everyone's had a chance to um, review consent calendar A, I would, Councilor Griegel. Uh, I didn't want to, I had a, a question on, on item C1A. I, I didn't want to pull it. I just wanted to maybe some clarification because uh, uh, there's a recommendation uh, from the staff that talks about uh, uh, the proposed RV will contain 37 spaces for various sizes <coughs> and 610 size. And then if you read the deal, it talks about 40 spaces. So I didn't know if it was 37 or 40 spaces on that. Because uh, the whole- Dan or Mark, if you'd like to come up here, please. The whole communication talks about 40 and then <laughs> the memo uh, talks about 37. So I, I didn't. <coughs> and it might be just an error there uh, because the, throughout the whole, Throughout the whole presentation, Mark, it talks about 40 plus six. The, the, the drawing that was presented to the Planning Commission had 37 spaces, but as we were discussing, the applicant amended his, his uh, proposal to 40. 40, okay. So um, I don't know, I think that 37 is a, a past memo that we originally drafted for planning commission it is now 40 spaces in the proposal okay and that's all that's all i had mary i just okay. I thought maybe there was some kind of type or something yeah but that, it, that, that, it that, was that. an amendment during the planning commission meeting okay thank you Councilor thank you. Grego. thank you thank you okay thank you mark <laughs> so would someone like to make a motion mayor i move that we approve consent calendar a okay thank you second that we have a motion and a second okay any further discussion okay start voting please miss holly the motion carried unanimously the next item on the agenda is regular business um business business brought forth by uh, city staff the first item is public works Thank you, Mayor. Um, this was just some housekeeping that um, as we were implementing the, the new rates this season for the utilities, we realized on our trash that we did not have in our ordinance the rate for the 96 gallon container um, for commercial solid waste. We have been charging $25, so staff's recommendation is that we just add that 25 of what we've been charging to the ordinance, um, and then we would keep it at 25 until the um, residential rate catches up to that. This is the second reading in public hearing for consideration. Okay, so at this time, do we open it up for a public hearing? Okay, at this time, we would like to open it up for a public hearing. Do you have anyone in the audience who would like to make any comments in regards to this item? If so, please come up to the podium. Okay, doesn't appear that anyone wants to make any comments, so I'll close the public hearing and um, refer back to council. There's no other comments, Mayor. I didn't, like uh, the city manager says, this most house house uh, keeping. I'll make the motion to approve ordinance number eight, 2018. Thank you, sir. I'll second that, Mayor. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, please vote, please. motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Harley. Okay, the next item, number two, is um, we have the police department, we have Chief Oaks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, come in front of you tonight to <coughs> request authorization. In 2019, I have a community service officer vehicle that's scheduled on the CIP to be replaced. <coughs> Recently, a 2002 Dodge truck that we're currently using in that position, uh, the transmission went out. And it's the recommendation of Tim Hillis from um, Public Works, um, Fleet Maintenance, that we don't replace that transmission because of the scheduled replacement in, in 2019. So I'm requesting that <clears throat> I get authorization to replace that vehicle in 2018 instead. 
Um, if we don't, the community service officers will have to share a vehicle, meaning that one vehicle will be used seven days a week, and on Wednesdays they would have to share vehicles. Um, we do have these funds available to us in our capital replacement, our vehicle replacement um, account. And so I come in front of you tonight to see, to gain authorization to make that purchase in 2018 instead of 2019. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Councilor Daniel? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Chief, does this change any of your capital plans for this year at all? I'm sorry? Would this change any of your capital purchasing plans for this year at all? No. No. Councilor Carson, then Councilor Vigil. Uh, do you guys already have a truck picked out? I've done some prelimin preliminary research on how much it would cost. We're looking roughly between thirty and 40000 um, We haven't done any type of uh, RFPs or RFPs for this because we, haven't, we don't have authorization to make the purchase. Uh, so I just, I've, I've looked at preliminary numbers. And will you get a truck similar to the Ford, or are you going to get some? To be consistent with our current fleet, we're going to stay with the Ford product, and that was recommendation of Tim Hillis. Okay. Councilor Vigil. Thank you. Chief, will you buy, if this is approved, will you buy uh, local? We would do the same process as we do with uh, all of our other vehicle purchases and give everybody an opportunity to, to put in a bid, and then we would go, go in that manner. And I do believe the last few bids that the local have fallen within that seven or eight percent that, that we provide for the local preference. And so the last few ones, I believe, have been local. That is correct. With our 2018 um, police officer, the vehicles for the police officers, uh, town and country was within that seven percent and was awarded that purchase. And we've ordered those vehicles from town and country. And they have won that bid in the last several years. That's good. Thank you. Councilor Griego? Uh, right along the same comment, uh, have we looked at maybe buying something used, uh, maybe a, a 2017 or 16 with uh, low mileage? Because anytime you go buy something new, you drive it off the, court, off the thing and it, it drops $10,000. So, so with, with the vehicle replacement plan, mm -hmm. these vehicles are, are scheduled every 10 years. Okay. Um, instead of every uh, seven to eight years on the police vehicles. Um, I've considered during this process talking with the city manager, looking at possibly a used vehicle, but you're looking at getting one that would increase that replacement uh, as far as the number of years, um, and also the risk of taking on maintenance issues that are unknown at that point in time. Um, these vehicles are driven quite often. Sure. And that's why I was asking maybe a, 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 instead of a 2018, uh, a 2017 with, uh, you know, the. You get these demo uh, trucks and stuff that you know have maybe five, six thousand miles on a seven thousand. Because I, I, from the past, from buying vehicles, you take a big hit once you buy a brand new vehicle and you drive it off the lot. It, it's a big hit. During my research, counselor, I, I located a couple of dealers that do have 2017 brand new vehicles still on there, which would be lower priced as well. So uh, moving forward, if authorized, you know, I could look at that option and I'd be willing to. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Carson. Uh, I move that we approve, give them authorization to move forward with that purchase. That okay. way they're thinking. Thank you, sir. We have a... I second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Start voting, please. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chief. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, the next item, Parks and Recreation, a motion to accept the 2018 Cattails Golf Club budget. And Mayor, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I will give a little bit of an opener, but then we do have members of the golf board here um, to address any questions. So if they want to make their way up to the podium, stop chit-chatting back there. <laughs> um, but this is the first time that we are actually doing this. This is per the new management agreement that on an annual basis, the budget would be presented to council um, and, and council would approve that. I think probably one of the items that was bigger as, as part of the drafting of that was this concept of debt. And so we're still working on finessing that and we may improve it in the future, but at this point, um, they very much wanted to be clear in regards to what the long-term debt, long-term 
debt is, how much of that will be paid down, um, and then also from that line of credit, how much they would anticipate um, using that as well. And so those were some details that are probably a little different than what you see in your normal annual budget, um, but we're trying to capture um, that debt because that seemed to be one of the areas that, that council was wanting to make sure they were aware of. And with that, I don't know if you guys want to add anything to the, the annual budget. Um, I don't think so. We're in the process of um, modifying a couple of the things, working through some things to hopefully lower some of the costs that are in there, the expenses. So um, with that it being in the works, I mean, we can't make anything definite at this point but hopefully to cut some expenses that are presently on there to improve that situation. So at the end, basically what I did is you have the current balances of the debt that's associated with the golf course at this point in time and uh, just went into a review and in the amortization schedule as it sits at this point and with the payments that we made in the past, of course with our course being seasonal and the income being seasonal, uh, we've gone principal and interest payments when we can, interest only in the off season because it doesn't make sense to me for us to be applying principal onto the line of credit and paying interest on interest. So um, as you can see at the end of that, also with our line of credit, just going off the history of the past two years, we do have 75,000 available to us. We have just barely gone over 50,000 the last, or two years ago it was, just under 50 this year, it did reach the 50, uh, so, and that was paid down to zero today, so. Okay, good job. Okay, Councilor Griegel. I guess uh, I had a couple comments here. Uh, one is, my main concern was that line of credit, mm -hmm. and like you said, you've already paid it down, and according to this, you're talking about 75,000, this says that only 55,000. So we have available, available to go up to. We don't anticipate using any more than 55 of that 75. And part of that goes to the discussion that, that we had um, from a council perspective is it's not so much what the line of credit is, it's what they anticipate. So should something come up and then they they realize they're going to have to go 60 or 65, then that's when they would come back to council. They'd okay. explain, Correct. we're going this much further. They'd probably have a re good reason and council can say, you know, okay. So that just has it to where if that, that's going to be exceeded, there's, there's a dialogue that didn't exist before. And I've, I've attended a couple of your meetings and I, I see the effort that you guys are making so to keep it down that way I, I don't have a problem with it but uh, if it does if there is need there uh, you know we could see how we can help or what we can do. Okay. Thank, thank you sir. Councilor Vigil. Thank you Mayor. Uh, Joel and Eddie thank you for coming tonight and giving us an update. Mm -hmm. um, can you comment on this uh, piece of the over the last few years, we've seen in your um, budgets and that, and, and you spend roughly between thirty and thirty-five thousand uh, a year on, on on someone taking care of your financials. Um, we had talks uh, last time during a work session when uh, City Council uh, Golf Board about the possibility over the next year of you guys moving your your uh, letting the city take that and, and you guys not having to spend thirty to thirty-five thousand. Do you, can you give us an update on that? We're in conversations presently with the city of having that taken care of, yes. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? I just would like to let you all know that we really noticed uh, the improvement in the golf board and the Thank direction you. that you're going. Each one of you is so passionate about what you're doing and it, it, it makes a difference and it shows. So keep up the great work, okay? Thank you. All right, well, Councilor Green. One comment I had is, uh, they elected a new chairman. I really don't agree with it, but uh, they unanimously <laughs> voted on her. Wow. Okay. Congratulations, chairman. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Councillor Hensley. If there's no other discussion, I move that we accept this uh, budget that has been proposed to us. I second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, let's start voting, please. Okay, Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, the next item on the agenda brings us down to the uh, city manager at legal. Heather. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, this item is the second reading in public hearing um, for an ordinance that would reduce the distance restriction from 500 feet down to 400 feet for only the hotel restaurant liquor license. Um, what brought this to staff's attention was during transition and leadership or ownership and those types of things, the bowling alleys license had expired. And so it's not something that can be grandfathered or anything like that. It's something that it's seen from the state as a new license. Um, and with how the distance restrictions are conducted, they were um, about 470, 417 feet from the OMS lot. Um, staff's first recommendation was to look at maybe just um, eliminating this distance requirement for those licenses that are tied to the food. Um, but I, council was not comfortable with that. And so instead you looked at modifying it from 500 to 400, which then would allow the bowling alley to get a liquor license. Okay. And you do need to conduct a public hearing. Okay. Well, we're going to open up a public hearing for ordinance, ordinance number 7218. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who would like to make any comments? If so, please come up to the podium. Okay. All right. Um, looks like no one's coming up to the podium, so I will close the public hearing and bring it back to council. Yes, Council Griegel and then uh, Councilor Carson. A couple of comments. I I've seen what that business, uh, the bowling alley, what it brings to our community and the people that are putting it together and the work they're doing, it, they're doing a lot of, they invested a lot of money into that place and they're working, trying to keep a, a, a viable business there. So anything we, we can do to, to help them, I, I think it would be, uh, it would be a, a plus. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Grego. Councillor Carson and then Councillor Broles. I was going to motion that we okay, Councilor Boyle's comments. No, I, uh, I, you know, I, I don't like have a liquor store within 500 feet of a school, but since the Bull and I has been there for what 20 plus years and had a liquor license, it would be unfair and in, inappropriate to to uh, to deny that. So, based on that, I think it's you know it's an okay ordinance to to uh, work with this facility. Okay, Councilor Carson. I move that we approve ordinance amending 1022 and 1028 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Alamosa. Um, ordinance 7-2018. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, if we could start voting, please. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. The next item, it looks like we're going to have a public, another public hearing. Okay, go ahead. Heather. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, we have many public hearings tonight. So this is a public hearing second reading for an ordinance that adds new sections to the Code of Ordinances regarding the issuance, renewal, and revocation of retail sales licenses. Um, essentially what staff was working on is we were looking at certain business licenses that had been um, negligent in turning in their previous years and their renewals. And the wording that existed in the existing ordinances had it to where we could not deny renewal unless we put them through the process of revoking the license. But we were struggling with how do you revoke a license that they no longer have at the same time. We also felt that if someone owed money to the city, that that should be taken into consideration as part of the issuance of their renewal as well. And so we researched other communities, took a look at what those criteria are um, that they would require for um, a renewal of the license and so we could deny or revoke a license if the license was obtained by fraud, misrepresentation, or false statements. Um, the licensed activity is a public nuisance as defined by ordinance or statute. The license was issued in air. Um, 
upon grounds provided by any other city application requirement, ordinance, state statute, federal law, or regulation of the city, state, or federal government pertaining to conduct of the business. So if they have some sort of violation of law. Um, if the applicant is in default of any indebtedness or other obligation due to the city, or if the proposed use of any premise for which the license is sought, is sought is not authorized by the Unified Development Code, building, housing, or other regulations. It is important to note that if the finance department does not issue the license or if they revoke the license, there is an appeal process that would come to the city manager. And then if they are not satisfied with what the city manager's decision is, they could also have the possibility of a judicial review. So there is some outlet there for continued hearings should an applicant feel that they did not receive their, their license fairly. Okay, thank you, Heather. So at this time, we will open it up for a public hearing and second reading of ordinance number 5-2018, amending section 2-183 of the Alamosa Code of Ordinances. Cons That's the wrong one? Oh, 6-2018, I apologize. An ordinance amending uh, section 18-31 and adding new sections 18-32 and 18-33 and Code of Ordinances of the City of Alamosa concerning standards for issue, issuance, renewal, and uh, revo revocations of retail sales licenses. I guess I'm going to have to concede to bifocals, you all. <laughs> okay, is there anyone in the audience who would like to make any uh, comments or anything pertaining to this? If so, please come up to the podium. Wow, okay, looks like um, we've opened the um, public hearing. Now I'll close it. Bring it back to council. Mayor, I had a uh, question. Yes, sir, Council Grego. Um, when we talk about uh, retail sales license, are we also put in, in that category liquor licenses and stuff like that? And maybe that'd be for Eric, because they pay sales tax too, uh, uh, liquor licenses. Uh, Actually, that's a question for Judy. I don't know whether they have a, uh, anyone who's a licensed liquor establishment with a liquor license, do they also have a retail sales license? She says they do, so it would apply to them we'll in see. the context of their retail sales license. And specifically the language uh, that we are adding that allows revocation upon the violation of any ordinance or state law or statute would allow uh, revocation if their liquor license violation violated anything like that. And I guess my question is, is since council plays the role of, of the the the, uh, the liquor authority, now we're relinquishing the revocation of a license to a finance director. Or no. No, no. You still the the liquor license is completely different. So. They have both a liquor license and a retail sales license. So the finance director just deals with the retail sales license. You are still the liquor licensing authority. And if you're going to revoke or suspend a liquor license, you would do that. The finance director wouldn't have any authority to deal with their liquor license. But if, if she revokes a retail license, sales tax license. Then they won't be able to sell liquor. OK. So then what happens then with the license? They'd still have the liquor license, they just wouldn't be able to utilize it in selling liquor until they satisfied whatever the condition was that warranted that. I don't, I don't understand. Well, if there is a violation dealing with, um, pri this is directed primarily toward non-payment of uh, taxes that should have been paid over, and non-payment of other city bills. That's primarily where the finance director would be revoking licenses. Um, I, if you're saying, should we narrow this language so that it's only for those things? You could do that. That would be an option. But you still, the council still retains authority over the liquor license. If someone has got a liquor licensed facility and is not paying their sales tax, under this new ordinance, the finance director would be authorized to yank their sales tax license without even coming to you because they're not paying their sales tax. And I understand that, but 
if if you have a liquor license, you have to sell liquor, right? You don't In order have to, have to sell it. We're 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 got, we're making that uh, a, a deal with the the new uh, uh, liquor store. If they if they're not completed by June, and start selling liquor, they have to give up their license. On we, we, that's not a deal that we're making. That's a condition of the issuance of their license by state statute. They have to become operational within two years. Okay. Otherwise, their license goes away. So if they're not operational because of a, a, you're pulling a sales tax license, then what, what does well, it no, that that's for anything? issuance of a No, that's for issuance of a new license. So, for instance, with Calvillo's, that was a new location that takes them a while. They have to get the license and then they have to construct the facility and get it up and running. That takes a while. So that's a new license. They have two years to do that. The, that two-year period doesn't apply to a license that's been suspended or anything like that or a sales tax license that's been revoked and they can't sell. It, 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 that, that period doesn't so a person, play. So a person could just not pay his sales tax and just remain with that license? Or yeah, but wouldn't be able to sell anything. They, they would have the license. They could keep it up. Yeah. Hey, Councilor Hansen. So I don't know if this helps clarify it. The way I guess I see it is with the liquor license where we have the authority has to do more with the idea of the actual liquor. And so with this, this is something totally different. And so it's if they're not doing the things they need to to run their business. So this, to me, doesn't conflict with the liquor license because this is more um, any business if they are, so obviously this came up because I'm not paying taxes, but it has nothing to do with any of the infractions that could happen with the liquor side of it, is how I see it. So that's why for me it. And I disagree because uh, okay. you can't sell, Somebody. Can't, uh, if you can't sell <coughs> liquor or sell anything because you haven't paid your sales tax, then what do we have a recourse on that as as, as the authority you got to pay your sales tax you right sales oh, no no i'm saying so you have a license there okay we're the authority on that license so how can he just sit there with the license without selling anything well the, the sales tax benefits the city so that's where the city i understand that and that if they don't but if they're not paying their sales Mr. tax they don't have the right to sell liquor either right but that's, and, and that's my concern uh right. councillor carson is that if, if we issue a liquor license, we're the liquor authority, okay? We issue that license, and they have to be able to sell license, I mean, be, be able to sell liquor. That's why they're applying for a license. They have nothing to do with each other. Yes, and they do. Councilor Griego, could, yes, I, do. could I suggest that maybe what you're thinking about is a provision uh, that when someone comes up for their liquor license renewal, which they do annually, right, Holly? Um, that if they have a, a uh, revoked or, or suspended sales tax license, that would be a condition that would prevent them from getting a renewal of their liquor license. It's I some, actually oh. already check with finance to make sure they're up to date with their sales tax license, so I don't renew that license until everything's caught up. And see, and that's the point I'm trying to make, you know. There should be some kind of something triggered if you're not paying your sales tax license you know and you were the liquor authority and we issued that license then we should have that you know at renewal or whatever we should have that brought back to us and say hey well, so so is not not complying with with the rules and regulations for liquor license they're not paying the sales tax license. Well, that, that does come back to you because you've delegated the renewal authority to your city clerk Okay. And she has just told you that her her uh, practice is that if the sales tax license is not current, she does not renew that license. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Daniel. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. I, I think, Eric, you may have just answered the question I was going to ask. Um, but under our liquor licensing authority, we don't have a provision for a sales tax Thing, right, but Holly checks that, so that's just part of our process. So there's no problem with that. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, council? Uh, Mayor, I move that we approve ordinance number 6 2018. Okay. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? 
If not, please start voting. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Okay, the next item on the agenda, I'm gonna try it a different way this time to see. <laughs> Public hearing and second reading of ordinance number five, 2018 amending section 2-183 of the Alamosa Code of Ordinances concerning uh, requirements of performance bonds. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. So as you indicated, this is the second reading. As council is aware, um, we put before voters the question on changing the charter requirement for performance bonds that was set at 5,000, um, which is a very, very small amount and, and was driving up costs for, for city projects. Voters were supportive of removing that requirement and that led us then to note that we have an ordinance that requires projects in the excess of 50,000. We still feel that 50,000 in and of itself is most likely going to be too low of a threshold for the projects that, that we work on. Um, one of the examples that was provided both to the public and council was when we were doing the construction of um, the parks building out at cemetery. There were additional costs because the limited pool for those individuals that, that could perform that, that project. So sc staff's recommendation is that we should not set that on a, a dollar figure, but rather the complexity of the project. Because there are some projects, such as that one that was 400,000, that we would not have recommended a performance bond. We still would have recommended insurance and other types of things like that, but not necessarily a performance bond. Now, there might be a different project that's only 200,000, but is extremely complex and would be something that we would want to require a performance bond. So staff's recommendation is we remove the, the link to 50,000 or any dollar amount, and instead during our capital improvement planning project, we would identify any project um, in excess of 50,000 that would need a performance bond. So that would be the time in which we'd have that discussion with council, we'd explain which ones we think, you can provide direction on if you agree with that or not. And so that's what this change is, is to remove the automatic 50,000 requirement. Thank you, Heather. Okay, at this time I would like to open it up for a public hearing and second reading of ordinance number 5-2018, amending section 2-183 of the Alamosa Code of Ordinances concerning requirements of performance bond, requirement of performance bonds. Okay, do we have anyone in the audience that would like to make any comments? If so, please come to the podium. Okay, we're batting a thousand. Okay, um, I'll close it. Bring it back to council. Okay, council. I'll close the public hearing and let me know your wishes. Yes, council brawls. No, I think uh, I think this only makes sense. It'll it'll save the city money and it makes practical sense for the contractors too, so that they don't have to go the extra expense. So I think it'll expedite some projects and save the city some money. Okay, thank you, sir. Councilor Carson. Um, I was going to move that we approve this. I think we've discussed it. Um, and we're, we're all pretty aware of what's going on. Uh, so I move that we approve ordinance dash, I mean 5 2018 amending section uh, 2. Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, do I need to Do I need to move that we approve the second reading as written? Is that what we do? Uh, that would be fine, or you can just move to approve it yep, either way. Okay. So I move that we approve ordinance 5 2018. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, if not, please start voting, please. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is the um, Rio Bravo update. Heather? Thank you, Mayor. Um, there's two reasons that we wanted to place this on your agenda tonight. The first one is, is based on council direction. You wanted this to be a very transparent and public process. And we know that from the community perspective, there are a lot of people um, who have a vested interest in this, who have um, communicated um, their different opinions related to the project. And so we wanted to make sure as much as possible to be transparent in, in up front with where we are in this process. 
And what I do want to share then publicly is that based on council direction, I have been having discussions with a developer in regards to the Rio Bravo project. We feel it's important to be clear on what aspects we might be having discussions on in that it is in regards to one of the alternative options that was presented during the public meeting held at the last council meeting. Um, it is not related to um, the initial proposal, but it is related to one of the options that um, was presented as an alternative. So staff has been having discussions with the developer in relation to that, and um, at some point may have additional information to share of council um, from a negotiation perspective. So um, I think we just wanted to make sure that the public is aware that those conversations are going on. Um, we also wanted to try to be clear what aspect or what form those conversations might be taking as much as possible um, and, and those types of considerations. The second reason we wanted to have it on the agenda is just in case council has had any questions or any thoughts that's not related to what would be an executive session, but if you've had any other thoughts or questions you wanted to ask, this could be an opportunity to, to share that at this point in time. Heather, is there going to be a need for us to go into executive session later? Yes, sir. Okay. I guess one comment, Mayor, go for ahead, me. Uh, I appreciate that you're keeping it as transparent as possible and, and that both the, uh, the, the people that are trying to put this together and the community out there let them know what's going on and stuff. So I really appreciate the, the efforts that you're, you're trying to keep. Councilor Brawls. I just want to know, is, is, is option two up there acceptable to the developers? I think we were going to discuss that in executive session, sir. Okay. There are no further discussions. Uh, Ma 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 yes, go if ahead. I may. Just want to... Uh, Councilor Vigil. Just want to communicate to everybody again that we keep on taking your comments, your concerns, your emails. And we will get those to the to the developer, to the staff, and to the rest of council. And we, we keep on asking for your input throughout this process. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Councillor, thank you. We do have the website is still very much active. Following the last public comment, we put this map up there um, just because it seemed to be that so much emphasis was being placed on it. And um, yes, that, that website portal is very much still active for public input. And I, and I just have one comment. I know the developer is here and it's, this is something new that came. Um, someone brought up and I, I don't think we've had any discussions about it so I just want to throw it out there because it did come in the form of a conversation but I'm not for sure if I could do that or not Heather we've had conversations that I can share with you in executive session okay good thank you alrighty next item would be committee reports do we have uh, council Vigo thank you mayor I went to a Rio Grande Farm Park retreat on Saturday and they are getting ready for uh, 2018. They looked at their goals from 2017, what they accomplished, what they were not able to accomplish, where the gaps are at and where they're trying to work to get that done. Um, the number one thing that they all agreed upon was that there needs to be some better security out there um, to protect their uh, belongings, you know, some of their equipment, as well as a fence to keep out um, the deer and the raccoons and that. Uh, so they're looking at different options for that. They've also are they're also talking about what they're going to do to farmers who, because right now the farmers are on a three-year plan, and um, they want to have like a graduation program, trying to connect them with local farmers to let them maybe buy or lease out some property to keep on farming. If the demand is not there for the farm park now, they're also looking at maybe uh, expanding those three years to another year or two. Um, they're, they're, they're really trying to work on uh, promoting the agro-tourism and, and people who want to come and see these kinds of, these kinds of farm parks. Um, 
and they have they have a lot of work to go, and they want they want to get after it. And they're also going to be good news is they're going to be building within this year a uh, a kids play area like a kids park, um, and they're going to hire local contractors to get that done. They hope to have that done by August. So, and they always ask me to invite you guys out there to check it out. Maybe buy it, maybe uh, rent out a, a little track and farm your own stuff this summer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who was next? Uh, Councillor Gray. He was Gray. next, but I just wanted to ask okay. Councillor Vija a uh, question on Gray. what he just presented. So are you saying that, uh, and maybe I might misunderstood, uh, the Guatemalan community, will, are they going to still be able to farm that property, or, or is that something different? Oh, okay. uh, Good question, Mr. Griggle. As far as I'm concerned, and I can find out more information, but um, what, what happens is these, these farmers, or people who are interested, submit an application to the group. Um, they run through the applications, and uh, there are some things that they have to do, these farmers have to do in order for them to keep getting grant money and for it to be a sustainable, eco-friendly park. Um, as, far as, as far as I know, each farmer gets three years. So, but I, I can definitely go back and ask them. I don't know for sure. And is that a, a, at a fee? And, uh, get a yeah, pay? absolutely. Yep. So that so in, but, but then in return, the farmers get to sell their, their product and make profit on their own product. Um, and the farm park, as well as other local food groups, um, have set up, of, of course, the, far, uh, the, um, the farmer's market. They do the Wednesdays. They're, they're now doing uh, uh, Wednesday markets at the, at the property. Um, they're helping them with marketing. They're all, another big thing they're trying to do is uh, help the farmers get their product to restaurants here in town. And the only reason I bring it up is uh, for years, and, and that's what kind of put together this whole farm park, was the Guatemalan community has farmed that back park back there, and they've used it as a form just to feed themselves, you know? <coughs> so if they're, and I, I hope that they're aware of it, the, 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 the families, that there's changes, and I'm sure they are, that if you guys are having your meetings, and that they're, that's communicated to them because I don't know what's going to happen there. You know, that's been a, a that's been a big plus for them to to grow their whatever vegetables that they grow to sustain them through the winter and stuff. So I could definitely find that out for you. And then, really and then another thing you need to know too is the Guatemalan presence there is so uh, profound that they're also going to make a, a sacred uh, spiritual site sure. uh, there on the on the grounds um, for people of any faith to come in there and okay. have a service as well as bless the crops and the fields and that. Thank you, Councilor Thank, Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilor Burroughs. Well, I'm just gonna report, I went to the Senior Citizens Board meeting and they're doing well, just to report back, so <laughs> let you know. <laughs> Thank we're you. Making, we're staying in contact with them. That's great. Thank you. Councilor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilor Griego and I were able to attend the um, first downtown planning picking the contractor hopefully meeting today um, and have a really diverse group of stakeholders that are in that meeting and I think our first meeting went very, very well. Um, we'll be bringing uh, potential people in, in the future for interviews and things like that but the entire process I think went very smooth. I, I'm really looking forward to working with this group and, and we'll keep council updated as um, things, things unfold. Okay, thank you Councilor Daniel. Okay. Are there any other um, committee reports? If not, we'll move to uh, staff announcements. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we do. Um, I, we do not have very many. I just want to remind Council that we do have a work session scheduled for next Wednesday at 6 p.m. And we also have the Council mini retreat scheduled for Saturday on the 17th. I anticipate getting agenda to you tomorrow on the draft agenda. Um, and then unless there's any changes or anything like that, we can get it posted early next week. That way, if there's any reading materials, we want to make sure Council has some time to 
to read those items. And so I think Holly has a few items too in regards from an update. Okay, thank you. I do, so I just wanna remind you all to, if you haven't got your CML conference registration form into me to get that back to me as soon as possible so I can get you registered, um, the lunch is sell out fast, so you wanna get that back soon. And then the second update I have for you is um, regarding the petitions that were going around for um, the change to the ordinance that you guys did um, allowing outdoor grows. Those petitions have been, in, been turned in. They were turned in last week, last um, on the 28th. So I have t 10 days since they were t turned in to verify those signatures, so that gives me until Monday um, the 12th. And so just gonna give you a quick update on the timeline so that March 12th is the date verification of signatures needs to happen. And then um, protests can be filed on the petition um, within 40 days after it's filed. So that, de that date is April 9th. And then, and council cannot act on these petitions until that 40 day time frame has passed. Um, and then once that has passed, you have 30 days um, to either pass that as it's written or send it to a special election. And then that special election has to happen within 90 days. And so that the last day that a special election can happen is July 29th. So, so once I get done with the signature verification process, I'll let you guys know. Um, they do have, if they're short on the number of signatures, they do have 15 days to cure it and bring back the amount required. And I think the language that Holly used in regards to a special election is important because it would be an election that's held just for us where we would um, have to pay the entire cost of that election compared to when we have our general election. We usually split the cost with the other entities that have something that go before the voters. Thank you, Heather, and thank you, Holly. Okay. Any other staff announcements? Okay. We'll move to uh, council comments. Councillor um, Vigil. Thank you. Just want to, we forgot to up here, Council, uh, congratulate the Alamosa wrestling team for their state championship a couple weeks ago. So kudos to those guys. And then good luck to the Alamosa boys who play tomorrow night. The Sanford boys play tomorrow. The Sangre boys are in state. The Centauri girls are in state. And the Creed boys are at state. So good luck to all those Valley teams. Um, and just a quick shout out to um, all the middle school and high school athletics in this Valley who bring in major money when they host tournaments and shootouts and all this stuff. That, especially here in Alamosa, there's a lot of people in beds all winter long in the downtime here. And, and people are spending their money uh, because of sports here in the Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have two quick ones. I was able to attend the Revitalize the Rio meeting on Monday. Um, and I think there's a lot of really great action plans that are coming out of that and some very exciting work. And so we'll keep you know, everyone posted, but the, um, now it's up to the community to move the action plans forward. Uh, so that, that's pretty exciting. And then I just wanted to congratulate Andy Rice and his family on their new little addition. Thank you. Councillor uh, Hensley. So I guess I will support the college side of it or the university side. So we actually have five wrestlers from Adam State going to nationals as well. We have our track team, uh, both men and women, sending quite a few people to nationals. And our men's basketball team made it to the semifinals, which has been a long, long time um, coming. Uh, they didn't win the semifinals, but they did make it there, which is, was real exciting. It was an exciting game last week. Thank you, Councillor Hensley. Mayor, can I jump in just quickly? Sure. Um, when we're talking about the, the numbers and the ice rink and the multi-purpose facility, um, I, I think many of you probably saw that we had a family night the other Friday and that was distributed through the school district and all that. Um, we broke any expectation that we would have had for the number of families that turned out. We had over four or 500 people that turned out. They ran out of skates again. Um, and it's just, it's heartwarming to see people utilizing the facility and seeing the use. We have a lot of information in regards to the number of times that we've had hundreds of people out there. And it's good to have the problem of needing to buy maybe more rental skates and those types of things. And listening to parents talk about their their teenagers having somewhere to go and to do something. And so um, we also 
based on some questions from Councillor Vigil. We've already had interest from the roller derby girls um, and some interest from other individuals during the pavilion time of the season when there is not ice. And so it's, it's just amazing. And if you were to talk to the hockey league, they've seen their numbers double in regards to the participants and, and we only think it's going to grow. So it's something that I know um, politically council took a bit of a leap of faith on listening to people and what it meant to this community and what they thought it would grow into. And it's just amazing to see it panning out its, its first year and the difference in the positiveness that it's been bringing to the community. Thank you, Councillor Vigil. Thank you, and if I could just go off of what Heather said, I just wanna make sure that uh, we up here uh, make that, keep that uh, place affordable for all kids and all families. Um, and then the second thing is uh, going out there on one of those nights and seeing all those people, I was floored, um, and, and just seeing what, we're, what we got going on down there. We have the softball fields, we have that little park, we have the soccer fields, we have the rec center, we have the ice rink now, we have the rodeo grounds. Like that's becoming a what I would call like a um, what's the Hang up. what's the word I use a like? complex yeah a rec a rec complex and over the next three four five years and that I think we should really make that a, like a just just bring it even higher let's make it even better with maybe like a, a some expand some parking other options maybe throw in a little, little park or you know something back there just keep it going out there because there's a lot of good stuff going out there it's a highlight of our city. Thank you. Okay, I have one uh, comment. Uh, my comment is gonna be to Chief Oaks and the entire uh, police department. I know this has been a very uh, challenging and uh, stressful week for you all, but I do want you to know that the community appreciates uh, the work that you do in our community to protect and serve others. And the entire staff are in our thoughts and in our prayers. And also on a positive note, Officer Tate Ken Shu, um, welcome a new baby into his family as well, along with Andy Rice. Thank you. Okay. Looks like we um, have an executive se session uh, scheduled. Mayor, I move that we, we move into executive session pursuant to CRS 24-6-402-4A and 4E. Okay, we have a motion. I will second it. I have a second, any further discussion? Not start voting, please. <coughs> Missing one. <laughs> okay. All right, Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you.